Hey everybody, Jim here. Thanks for joining in. The air and the water are getting warmer here, which means the dive season is right around the corner. So, good time to review some basics. Today's topic is the buddy system, which includes the buddy check. Today is going to be a review of the buddy check system. There are a few variabilities and I have my own system. I'm kind of curious what you folks do out here. By the way, we're just talking recreational. Also, there's going to be a quick review of some buddy skill basics. And again, I would like to hear from you folks. And if you're still around at the end, we're going to talk about some really weird buddy protocols here in Japan. And I'd love to hear if you have any strange ones to share as well. Okay, let's get into it. I want to talk about the buddy check because if you're new, uh, some people learned these acronyms. So for example, I think PADI is B-W-R-A-F. What does that stand for? That's BCD, weights, releases, air, and then final check. And then let me see, BSAC has their BAR, B-A-R, uh, buoyancy, air, releases, kind of basic. And apparently now, I've never seen this. I just did a little bit of research for this video. I have never seen this acronym. Seabag, uh, and that's site emergency, activities, buoyancy, air, and gear. Now, it's kind of interesting. So site, emergency, and activities, th those are great things to discuss. Um, personally, I feel like that's more the briefing stage or actually the, the planning stage. It's nice to see included. I wouldn't really call that a buddy check. Then you have buoyancy, air, and gear. Gear is awfully uh, wide, isn't it? For my folks with open water training, uh, actually, I'm very poor at remembering acronyms. So I, I don't use an acronym system. And what I use is everybody has a head and that's easy to remember and everyone has feet. So I go head to toe. So for me, what I teach the students is start at the head, you know, if, you know, hood, uh, but of course mask is the next one down, right? I have my mask, you have your mask, where is it? Uh, next down from, you know, is gonna be the primary regulator, which is gonna be hanging over here. We're going to breathe the primary regulator. That is also the time that we would check our air pressure and for the primary regulator, I will have the person, the diver, look at their SPG and breathe very hard <sighs> while looking at the SPG. And what they're looking for is any movement. If the SPG moves while you're doing that check, it means your air tank is partially closed. Next down in my case would be my spare regulator is going to be here. So I would also breathe the spare regulator trying it out. I do not have to look at the SBG again because the tank valve, if you checked it once, you don't have to check it twice. Tank is tank. Uh, moving on down, for me, the next thing would be, uh, I don't have any releases, but I have my inflator deflator here. I'm going to blow it up, make sure it deflates. Probably also blow it up and try my, uh, my exhaust valves wherever they may be. Um, other BCs have lots of other potential releases here. So as my buddy is going down, we would check their releases, make sure uh, they, they release and whatnot. At this stage, I will also acquaint myself with my buddy's release systems, especially if this is a new buddy for me, because I want to know how do I get this BC off that diver in the case of an emergency. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a really serious emergency, by the way. It could be, you know, this diver gets very fatigued or some heat stroke or heat fatigue or blister or whatever. You know, I might have to get this BC off that person, help them. And if I don't look at the releases, for example, the Sequest releases, kind of difficult for me if, if in the beginning. And if I looked, you know, if someone looked at a Sequest release, the first time in a panic situation, they might not know how to undo that release. So uh, what I do, if I have a new buddy on a boat and I go somewhere, I'm Thailand or Philippines, I've got this diver, my first time buddy, I'm going to look at that BC and I'm going to think of how am I going to get this BC off that person if I had to. That's what you want to think about. Okay, moving down, the next thing down would be somewhere down here, the weight system. For me, I'm going to have some Velcro pockets. Other BCs, as you know, they have various releasable systems. Again, I'm going to look at that. How do I release my buddy's weight in the case that that needs to be released? 
Okay, moving down from there, for me, I've got pockets, so I'm going to be checking there. You know, okay, I have an SMB. Do you or I have some wet notes? What do you have? Um, you know, if we need an SMB at that site, that's a piece of essential equipment. Moving on down from there, of course, at the end, you're going to have your fins, right? Got your fins uh, or not. And remember, when you hop on a boat, if you don't have those things on the boat, if the boat doesn't have an extra pair of one of those things, you're done. So, or if it's a very long walk, we have some entries that are a super long walk. You don't want to get all the way out there and find out you don't have something that happens all the time. As an aside, this is also the stage of the check where you want to verify how an air share would occur. For example, if you notice that your new buddy has an air two or some kind of a breathing device integrated with their inflator, uh, integrated air of some kind, you're going to want to know what's going on. As a review, you recall that in an air share situation, there are just two kinds of things that's going to happen. I'm going to donate the thing I'm breathing or I'm going to donate the thing I'm not breathing. So you're going to want to know from your partner, what are they going to donate to you? And you're going to want to make sure that works and what the procedure is going to be. So I'm going to let them know that where they're getting their air from, from me, which is a primary donate. I'll go to the secondary. Now, at the end of it all, I do advise divers to do a final check, usually a complete walk around, give the tank a shake. You know, very often, some of those tank straps aren't going to be done up right or maybe done up loosely. Something will be loose, something like that, or a hose will be tucked in a tank strap or through a belt or something like that. Give it all a try. Uh, if you're diving a long hose, we always deploy, fully deploy it just to see that it's going to go where it's supposed to go. This is probably getting more into technical, but technical divers will lean back into the water and they'll look at each other to see if any bubbles are coming out. Anyway, you could do a bubble check as well. That is the buddy check. And like I said, I'd really like to know, or what system do you use? Maybe I've left out a few things here, I don't know. The next thing is the buddy system starts right before the entry, actually, right? So I, I want, especially when I'm teaching open water, I want the, the buddies to get into the idea that, you know, helping each other walk down the beach, um, enter the water. If there's, you know, wavy conditions or, or we have places where uh, the bottom has a lot of, like, it's just boulders, right? And so you're walking, your, your feet can go between the boulders or you can kind of trip. And if there's a little bit of wave chopping and you really can't see into the water, it's really easy to fall over. And of course, in those situations, it should be mask on, regulator in, BC, partially inflated, but also, you know, be there for your buddy. Um, does not happen often. I've heard of some freaky stories, people drowning in knee deep water. You know, doesn't happen often, but it can happen, especially if you got heavy gear on your back. You know, when I've had my doubles on, you know, 18, liter steel doubles really heavy in a stage tank <laughs> at, at that site. I've always wondered what would happen if I fell on my face. I don't know how quickly my buddy would be able to get it off me, but I would have had my regulator in my mouth. So, so on the entry, buddy system starts before the entry, walk into the entry, especially if it's, if it's an unsteady thing, you got waves, you got unsteady surface, same thing on the exit. Right. I know there's a story. I, I, I was right there. Uh, it was a married couple coming in through some waves and, you know, the husband kind of got away from from uh, his buddy, the wife happened to be. And turned out she had a tough time in the waves and almost, you know, was was having a, a tough time. She was getting knocked around by those waves. She had to be kind of soft rescued by by the other another buddy. So entry and exit. Don't let that buddy system fall apart. Now, during the dive, distance from your buddy is, is kind of an interesting variable. Usually, people let that be influenced by the visibility, which is interesting. Uh, I can see, on the one hand, uh, you're, you're, you know, if the visibility is very small, you know, a few meters, you, know, you want to be close for sure because of losing visually your buddy, that p possible potential. However, in the case of an equipment failure, you know, an out of air, uh, sometimes I see if, if there's 40 meters of visibility and if you're 20 meters from your buddy, that's going to be a really <laughs> awkward 
run if uh, if someone ran out of, of air um, or you're not close enough to to detect and cut off other problems right if you're that far away so uh, don't be fooled by good visibility just because you can see your buddy doesn't mean you can get there in time to do something just a, another touch generally speaking you want to be easy for your buddy to see right you want to be easy for your buddy to see so generally that means side by side but you know once in a while a buddy will get back or forth um, a really annoying thing is is for the rear buddy to be in a position where the front buddy cannot see that buddy easily. That's a very difficult position to be in. Also, buddies that are at significantly different depths can be really uh, annoying people to dive with because then you're looking up, you don't know where this buddy is. And again, it's, it's like top gun fighter, right? Um, so make sure that you're, you're easily spottable. Photographers are notoriously uh, poor buddies because they're focused on, on, uh, on, photographing so uh, my recommendation you know if I had what, what I try and do if I'm not if I don't have a pressing mission I might become like the finder you know I'll find stuff for the person to photograph if there aren't a lot of creatures very obviously around so that's kind of a nice symbiosis you can have with a photographer a buddy um, otherwise you know better have those priorities ironed out before the dive which is why a lot of serious serious photographers are solo divers uh, here we, we have a fair bit of wall diving. If there's a wall here and I have two side-by-side -side divers, this diver is getting a nice view of the wall. This diver is like, good grief, you see anything over there? I don't see anything, right? So wall diving really shouldn't be side-by-side, -side, right? It should be front and back. So both divers, you know, are arm distance from the wall. They have a good view. And of course, the rear diver can see the diver in front easily. Now, the diver in front, you know, I'm sure you can guess, but how, how's that diver? If the diver's in the proper position, how's that diver going to check the diver in the rear? Well, actually, the diver's going to look underneath themselves in the prone position. So, sorry, Scuba Steve. Ouch, that looks painful. Sorry, Scuba Steve. Right, Scuba Steve's going to look down uh, below his belly and through his legs and check uh, the diver to his rear that way. That way, you know, you don't have to be breaking trim to be looking around, right, or getting vertical and looking around. You're just keep in your, your stance, look down below. All right, if you've made it this far, now you're going to hear a very quick uh, note about uh, diving here. Now here in, in Japan, I think Asia in general, but definitely here in Japan, we have some different procedures and they're generally built around the idea of group diving as opposed to buddy diving. And I think some of the standards here for Naoi and Paddy were written differently. So Paddy Japan and Naoi Japan are like different entities that used to have their own textbooks. Certainly the textbooks are translated and there are some differences there. So for example, uh, there are plenty of places here years ago, and maybe buddy diving is becoming more common now, but plenty of places where your buddy is the instructor, even if you're diving with 10 other people. So you have an instructor and let's say eight divers, an instructor and eight divers, and those divers aren't really, they don't have a buddy. They're just like all cows or sheep following the instructor and uh so there's no there's no real buddy and so one time i was uh, at a dive site and we're we're, you know, we're always practicing buddy diving and what i tell folks is look you know in fact you could look at my my briefing video it's it's a good one here's the briefing here's the dive site here's what to do here's what not to do here's what you can see Here's the entry, here's the exit. Here's how I'm going to go through this uh, system. And you are welcome to follow me or create your own way through this system safely uh, within the parameters of depth and time and whatnot. And see you, see you later. And, oh, and I said, you know, if you're following me because, you know, there's nothing unusual at this site, no, no you know, nothing going on. If you're a buddy pair and you get separated, well, enjoy your dive, I'll see you later. Or if you're uncomfortable, you know, go ahead, surface together and swim it on in. We were at a site. Uh, I, I didn't know at the time, but there it was really predominantly a group diving situation. And one of the pairs 
of my divers got separated from the main group. But again, do your dive, right? You're two certified divers. Um, and they encountered a group. And the instructor in that group looked at them as like, hey, where's where's your instructor? Somehow he was he was asking them that underwater. And they were like, I don't know. And he said, come here. He grabbed them. Go up. And I, I, I feel bad for his group. He took his whole group up to, to grab my two divers and surface them. And he essentially ruined the dive, ended the dive of all of his divers who were paying for a very expensive dive uh, at that place. And then he came in and he was you know, hollering at me. It was, you know, I had the translator there. It was this great big argument. It was a, <laughs> it was a really ugly situation. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that after that I knew, well, that's how we dive, you know, the whole world, you know, it's a buddy system. So at, at least this one other site that I dive, maybe others where they go one step beyond. So whenever I used to rent equipment there, this was Oshima, beautiful place. Um, whenever I used to rent equipment there, the regulators only come with one second stage. And the first time I was like, hey, well, what's the deal here? And he says, oh, well, it's a group dive. And if anybody who need, anybody who would run out of air, they come to me, the instructor, to for I have a second stage. And I was just, you know, asking the obvious question, well, what if two, <laughs> what if two divers went out of air? What would you do? Yeah, I don't remember the answer. Um, so whenever I went to there, you know, I if I was renting gear, I would bring extra second stages to put onto those rental regulators. Um, yeah, very unusual situation. So the group diving thing here in Japan uh, can be a thing. I think it's still a thing someplace. Let me know your experience. Are there places in the world that, that group diving exists? Are there other strange uh, buddy situations? Let me know. That was everything I wanted to uh, have a look at. Thanks a lot. If you got some value out of the video, please go ahead and pound a like. It helps the activity of the video and I'd appreciate it. And if you want to comment, comment on uh, what's going on in your part of the world with, with the buddy system. Alrighty. And last, the channel now has Patreon. So if anybody wants to uh, be a patron of the channel and support the channel in that way, please have a look. There's a link there. There are some different levels. Anybody wants to do it, I'm of course very appreciative. If not, I appreciate you lasting this long. I'm sure you are a very rare soul, and I appreciate you coming by. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you on the beach.